sign it, don't keep working, sign it, export. Sign it, export, it's never gonna be perfect. Oh, hey there, how are you guys doing today? I was just wrapping up a painting. It's uh, taking a little bit longer than expected, but I'm sure I'll have it done this afternoon, or tomorrow, or, I mean, may I mean maybe never. Before we get started today, let's take some time to uh, recognize the new piece on the wall, an ancient coin portrait of myself and my twin brother. I also reinstalled uh, some lights. Today we're talking about a very difficult topic. When I decided I was going to be an artist, uh, I decided I wasn't going to be a messing around hobbyist. I wanted to be a serious artist. Any painting or any work I do isn't just going to be, you know, a dabble. It's going to be a masterpiece. That first one, I call him Admiral Gaslow, took two months. Two months. And it didn't stop there. You know, my next couple paintings, they took months to complete. I mean, in my first serious year as an artist, I completed like six or seven works. It was absolutely pathetic. Let's jump into today's video, how to finish your artistic works faster. For this time lapse, I'm gonna be showing you guys a portrait I did of my friend John. We happen to find ourselves temporarily unemployed or on leave due to uh, buddy COVID-19. So with our spare time, we decided to visit our friend down in Busan, which is a southern city in Korea. And we found ourselves on the train, an empty train. First time I had ever seen that. Two and a half hour trip, I decided, hey, why? it's been a while since I've sketched somebody from life. Why don't I try sketching my friend John? Tip number one. Is this just for practice or is this uh, for real something serious piece that I'm gonna later showcase, put in a portfolio? Having these two distinctions in my mind definitely allows me to allocate resources and time uh, appropriately. I'm not gonna re spend a ton of time researching just a quick art study or you know sketch. Also, you're going to want to decide on a focus of the painting. Are you trying to focus on a certain character? Are you trying to focus on a certain scene? If you just get this to the front of your mind or maybe even write it down, this will save you the reflex of spending too much time in detail on something that is supposed to be secondary uh, to the viewer when they're looking at the painting. Perhaps some of you might like to stick to a specific style, but for the artists out there like me who are always trying to learn something new, get yourself reference images of any kind of new style or technique or element that you're gonna bring to this painting. Get all that research and reference images up front in the beginning before you get started. That'll save you plenty of time later on. Tip number two. I consciously made the decision to only use three colors, a highlights, a mid-tones, and a shadow color. If I endlessly blend colors or I use endless amounts of colors, this could end up taking a very, very long time where what I'm trying to actually do is just capture the essence of him and the likeness of him in this moment as quickly as possible. I'm limiting my color palette and that is of course giving me less choices which will help me move a little bit more quicker and be more decisive on the shapes that I'm that I'm working with. You might decide to start working initially with just black and white or you know black, white and gray. Many famous painters uh, in history were known to do this. Limit your palette at the beginning and then expand, add more colors later on. I of course am kind of backtracking. I, I started initially with every color and every tool, everything and now I'm kind of simplifying things, or at least trying it out here and there. Also, mediums like watercolors are very helpful because unlike with digital paint or with oil paint, you can't go backwards. And that's why I've kind of stayed away from watercolors because they're kind of scary, difficult to do well. I'm eventually gonna get there, but uh, maybe I should have started there. Lots of mistakes, Gary. Tip number three. The most common mistake that slows artists down when working digitally is they zoom in too much. They zoom in and they spend too much time on details and then they zoom out and they realize that 
those details weren't even necessary. Uh, this goes back to the have a plan phase. You know, digitally, you could spend a whole week just deciding on what kind of like texture you want on the background and what's your brush set going to be. Then you can later get boxed down by having like a thousand different layers. These are all mistakes. These are all mistakes that led to me taking months to finish one painting. These days, you know, I'm still working quite complex with many different colors and techniques and stuff like that, but I limit my brushes to only like maybe four brushes max and most of the work, like 90% of the work, I do with just two brushes. I'm also these days not using that many layers. In this painting, I think I ultimately used just two layers. If you're working traditionally, you could spend a ton of time putting up grids to make sure you transfer a portrait, you know, 100% accurately. This is great if, if this is like a commissioned piece and it really has to nail the likeness of the, your subject. But if you're trying to get more works out the door, just get started, limit those tools. And yeah, it might not come out perfect, but it, you'll learn faster for sure. And you'll actually finish the works faster. Tip number four. You know, the more you practice, the better you get. And when you spend all this time finishing one painting, you're not actually practicing, you know, the fundamentals of drawing that much. Whereas if you do lots of art studies, you kind of quickly rush through the whole process and you end up getting a lot more practice. I did a, a pretty decent art study of this guy, John. And then with one of the perks of working digital is I can make a saved version of that art study and then do the final painting just right on top of the art study. E you know, even if you know, okay, this is the scene I want to do and I want to do a professional gallery hang quality painting. Well, maybe do like a couple really quick small art studies and then that make helps you just make the tough decisions quicker so that when it comes time to making those decisions in the final, you're not sitting there second guessing yourself constantly going back and forth. You'll see me second guess this painting where I'm not sure what I want the background to be. Do I wanna show the train or do I wanna just have an abstract background focusing just on John? Uh, I made some of these mistakes and I learned from it. Tip number five. So this is something I also learned the hard way. If you're working solely on one painting, you can just be really hell bent on getting this one work out the door. You're painting like eight hours, nine hours uh, a day on one painting. And what happens is you end up second guessing yourself. You end up going forward and then deciding to go backwards again because you're not sure if it was the right decision and you put too much emphasis and energy on just this one work. You also, you're not giving yourself enough time to look at the painting with fresh eyes. I mean, you can flip the canvas back and forth to help you get fresh eyes, but the best thing to do is maybe work on it a few hours and then take a break or switch to another project. Totally just let that project rest for a bit. Come back to that project the next day. You know, I typically these days have about three or four projects going on at any given time. I mean, I run into a roadblock on one project, something's just not working. Sleep on it, you know, a week, work on some other projects, come back to it with fresh eyes, with a fresh mind. And, you know, sure enough, I've already realized what I need to do. It's been something I've been leaning into this uh, last year heavily. It's helped me finish my works faster. Uh, and it's also just helped keep the stress down, keep painting, keep it all, keep it all fun. You know, that's what we're here to do. So that's my final tip. Uh, I'll let you guys watch the rest of the time lapse and I'll check back with you at the end.
Well, guys, it's been a journey. Uh, my friend John, when I showed it to him, he was taken a little bit aback on how kind of like somber he seemed, and he wondered if this is really how I see him. But it was uh, quite a good scene, and you know, he's a he's a complicated guy. He likes combat sports and Muay Thai, but he's also uh, very deep philosophically and a, and a heavy reader. So I thought it was a great scene, and uh, in a way, I do think it kind of captures him pretty well from my perspective, at least. Anyways, uh, John, when you see this, love you, buddy. Thanks for being my friend. It was uh, a fun painting to work on, and I'll be visiting you soon. He moved to uh, Jeju Island, which is uh, in the south, so I get to go on vacation. For everybody else watching, uh, drop in the comments what you would like to see me talk about next. Leave any productive criticism you might have. And as always, like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Keep creating that art. We'll see you next time.